Hello and welcome back to our study of the Dhammapada. Today we begin the Balavaga, the chapter on fools. So all the verses in here, in this chapter, will be uh, have something to do with uh, fools or foolishness. Uh, verse 61 today, which reads as follows. Charanti nadigacheya seyang sadi samatano ekang charang da ekachariyang dalhang kaira nati bale sahayata. Which means Charanti nadigacheya seyang sadi samatano. If one doesn't find, if when uh, wandering or faring through samsara, one doesn't find uh, someone who is one's equal or better, better or or at least equal to oneself. Eka charyang darhangaira. One should there, therefore, or uh, then one should then uh, fare on resolute alone, fare on alone with uh, steadfast resolution. Nati bale sahayata, for there is no association with fools. So the story behind this verse goes that when the Buddha was dwelling in Savati, Mahakasapa was staying in his cave above Rajagaha, which you can still see today if you go there. Apparently they have well, they have a place that they pinpointed as his cave. Anyway, you can still go into to Rajagaha. Up on the mountain above Rajagaha, and he would go every day down the mountain into the city for alms. And at the time, he had two students, two novices, uh, staying with him. And they would attend upon him. And one of them was a good, good student, and one of them was a rather recalcitrant student, uh, was uh, lazy in performing his duties and in practicing the Dhamma. And so how it, how it would go is the one student who was quite diligent and faithful and, and uh, obedient and so on, he would prepare the elders water in the morning and his tooth stick, tooth brushing sticks and uh, prepare, uh, he would wait upon his elder and perform all these duties and he would heat up water for the elder's bath and uh, leave the water out in the morning. <coughs> and the other disciple uh, would watch and would come or would sleep in and then would come out when everything was done and look and see that everything was done and go to tell the elder, Venerable Sir, the, uh, the, the tooth, tooth Two sticks have been put out, and water has been put out for washing and, and uh, for bathing. Please come, and, and it's time to to, to uh, do your morning routine. And so the elder, as a result, got to thinking that this student who kept coming to, to, to tell him and to invite him to use the things that had been set out for him uh, had, had performed duties himself. And the other student, who had actually done all the work, sat back and watched, and after some time realized what this this other student was doing, that he was taking credit for the work that he hadn't done, he uh, decided, he said, well, I know what to do then. And so he, in the morning, when it was time for the elder's bath, he went uh, to the the uh, the room where the, they boil the water, and he put just a little bit of, of water in the bottom of the big pot, the big cauldron for boiling bath water, and uh, he did that. And so just you could see the steam coming up, but there was very little water in it. And then the other, the other novice, when he came over and saw the steam coming out, he said, oh, I must have put out the water. And uh, he went to tell the elder, Venerable Sir, your bath water is ready. Come and take your bath. And the elder went into the bathroom and said, okay, bring out the water. And the novice went into the, the boiling room and looked in the cauldron and realized that there was just a very little bit of water and got very angry and shouted, and he said, that scoundrel, he, he, he only put a very little bit of water in, and then so he rushed off to the river to get more water. 
wherever the river was, rushed off to get water from wherever they kept the water. Maybe he must have had to gone down into Rajaga had to get the water. And um, the elder watched him go, and and when he came back, the elder said, oh, uh, "What do you? What did you mean by that? that are, are you saying that you didn't you you didn't do any of this, and you've been taking credit for this all the time?" And yeah, he said, "That's not." How, and the elder scolded him and said, "That's not how you how a, a monk should behave. One should not take credit for something that one hasn't done." And the novice got very angry, and went off in half and began to develop a grudge against the elder. The next day, or, or on subsequent days, they went off, uh, when they went off for alms, I guess the next day, the, when they went for alms, he, as a result, he, he, he decided that not to go on alms with the elder. And so when the elder and the other novice went off for alms, they went alone, and the, the uh, disobedient novice, he stayed back and was just sulked at the kuti, at the cave, and uh, the elder went with his other novice. <coughs> and then when they were gone, he went off to one of the elder's, uh, how, elder's supporter's houses, he went, went down into Rajagaha on his, on his own, and went to one of the elder's supporters and said to them that the elder was sick. They said, oh, where's the elder? Why are you coming alone? He said, oh, he's sick, but uh, he needs some special food. And please give him very uh, uh, delicate and uh, good tasting food and so on so he can he can recover from his sickness and so they gave him all this special food prepared all this special food for him and he took it back and ate it himself and uh, the elder the elder went on alms round with the other novice and happened to get a full set of robes new nice uh, robes from one family and so he gave them to the novice that went with him. And the novice changed out of his old set and put on this new set of robes. And they went back to the monastery. <clears throat> on yet another day, the elder went to see, happened to go to see this supporter who had been tricked. And uh, they said to the elder, Oh, our venerable sir, how are you doing? We heard that you were sick. Um, but we gave, you know, we gave food to the novice when he came. Uh, hope, hope the food helped you to get... Uh, to get better. And the elder just stood there, didn't say anything, and received food from them and went off. And then he went back to the monastery and he confronted this novice. And he said to him, is it true that you've been going around? Uh, is it true that you went to these people and told them that I was sick and, and, and convinced them to give you all this special food? And he said, what do you, what, what do you mean? It's just a... Just, and it, he, he scolded him, Mahakasapa scolded him and said, that's not something that a monk should do. And the novice was, he was totally fed up at this point. He said, over a little bit of water the elder gets upset, and then he gets upset about a little bit of food. And on top of that, he's been giving, he gives a robe, a full set of robes to the other novice. So this, this novice got very, very angry, and then he said, I know what I'm going to do. And the next morning when the elder went off on alms round, he went around the cave and, and broke up all the pots and, and everything, just tore, tore up everything and ripped up everything, all the bedding and everything, and then set the whole place on fire. And then he ran off. And I think uh, ended up in hell as a result. But <clears throat> the elder came back and saw all this and uh, fixed it all up as best he could and, of course, went on with his life. So this uh, this is a story of these two novices, one who was a good good companion and the other is a bad companion. And eventually the story got back to the Buddha. One of the monks from Rajagat uh, wandered all the way to Savati and the Buddha asked him, how is, how is Mahakasapa doing? And he said, oh, he's doing fine, but uh, he happened to have these two uh, students and one of them was very, very good and... and uh, we follow, followed the elders' instruction and advice and practiced the elders' teachings. But the other one was uh, an evil scoundrel. And uh, not only didn't, did he not practice, but he also ended up uh, destroying the elders' residence. And the Buddha said, oh, the, oh the, yes, yes, uh, the, the elder is better off without this novice. And he, ta he told a story of the past. This is the introduction to one of the Jataka stories where the, he was a monkey and he tore up this bird's nest. I'm not going to tell the story. It's not much to it, but 
uh, he said, basically, you know, this novice, this is the way he was. And he said, uh, better off without him. He said, there's no association with fools. If, you, if the only people you can hang out with and rely upon are fools, well, you're better off without them. And then he told this verse. So a simple story, a story that I'm sure we can all relate to, us all living in caves, having novices attend upon us. Uh, no, all of us having good friends and bad friends, people who we can rely upon and people who we shouldn't rely upon, people who, who, who help us up and people who drag us down. And so as, uh, as meditators, this is... Well, this is a, one, of the, one of the most important aspects of our practice is the association with good people. The Buddha said it's all of the holy life, all of the spiritual life. The spiritual life is all about associating with the right people, having a good friend, having someone to guide you and teach you and raise you up. In many places he said that friends are, good friends are most valuable and to not associate with fools. Of course, there's the famous, the, the Mangala Sutta, the first thing that the Buddha says is not associating with fools, this is the greatest blessing. <coughs> so how does this go? The verse is broken down quite well by the commentary, so I'll go through that first and uh, then talk a little bit about how it relates to meditation particularly. Um, first of all, the word charang, uh, charang, which means to fare or to wander or to travel, uh, to to move about, to, to live your life, basically. Uh, it, the commentary says it, it doesn't refer to moving about with your body. It, it refers to the movements of the mind or the, um, the way of the mind. So it has nothing to do with being close to someone. It's not like if you, you shouldn't sit on the subway next to someone unless you're sure they're a wise person. It also doesn't necessarily mean that you can't work or live or cohabitat with such people. So it says uh, manasacharang, which means uh, the, the faring of the mind. Don't let them into your heart, basically. Don't take them, take their counsel or, or uh, take them up as your, as your intimate associates. Um, and then what is meant by sayyang sadhisamattanos, and what is meant by one who is greater than you or one who is equal to you. The commentary says it's, it's specifically in regards to uh, sila samadhi banya, morality, concentration, and wisdom. So if someone has greater morality than you, if, some, if there's someone who is practicing higher morality, for instance, monks who, who are uh, practicing celibacy and poverty and who are taking themselves... Um, Taking themselves out of all of the uh, all of the uh, distracting activities that lay people will engage in, then it's something that can help us to cultivate concentration ourselves. If we associate with such people, if we are around people who are um, if we're around people who are equal to us, then uh, it, it will not our morality will not fade away. If we have if we're around people of greater concentration, then their concentration will be a support for us. It'll be an example for us. It'll be something that we can um, we can rely upon or we can emulate uh, to cultivate concentration ourselves. And if, if we hang around people who have wisdom, greater wisdom than that, than us, then it'll be something that um, inspires us and teaches us. Of course. So the 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 reason for hanging out the, the best thing, of course, is to hang out with someone who to associate with people who are greater than you because you will, you will develop wad, wadati, the, the good qualities of morality, concentration, wisdom will increase if we're around good people who are, who are of greater morality, concentration, and wisdom than us. And if we are around people who are of equal, uh, at an equal level to us, then uh, we can be assured that we at least won't fall away from our morality, concentration, wisdom, and as a result, through our own practice, we'll be able to um, we'll be able to develop. The point is that the people around us won't drag us down. If you're around people who are inferior to you, and if you rely upon them, and if you emulate them and cultivate <coughs> their qualities, then you will um, fade, you will fall away from your, your own morality and concentration. I mean, it comes under attack if you let them in too close. 
Uh, now, if you can't find, so if you can't find someone who is greater or someone who is equal to you, the Buddha said, actually, it's, it's preferable to uh, hang out on your own. Now, the, um, the, the emphasis, the key word here is dalhang, because dalha means steadfast or resolute, and the point is that you actually need resolution if you're on your own. Many people are always contact, uh, many people are contacting us uh, constantly. We get these emails from people saying that they're all alone and they need some, they need some guidance and uh, bemoaning the fact that they're not able to find a sangha community. And the Buddhists give reassurance, and we should reassure such people that you can practice on your own. You don't really need so much guidance. It's just, um, it just takes more resolution because if you're not surrounded by examples or pe people who are reminding you to uh, reminding of what you're doing, reminding you of the cultivation of greater morality, concentration, wisdom, it's, it's easier for yourself to fall away. It's like <clears throat> a plant um, or a young tree that requires a, a cage or some kind of support to keep it from falling over, to keep it from breaking in the wind and so on. Um, that, that support is, is helpful and, unless the tree itself is able to uh, make, maintain its own strength and, and grow on its own. So this, the, the you know, the benefit of having a good companion is that they support you through your growth. Nati bali sahayata. Why is it that we we should either we should stay on our own if we can't find such a person? Because the association with fools. There is no association with fools. The meaning being that none of the good things that come from uh, associating with good people, morality, concentration, wisdom, uh, all of the good. Katta, what do the ten types of profitable speech, uh, all of the dutanga practices, all of the uh, vipassana insight, and, and even the attainment of nibbana is uh, difficult, or becomes difficult and becomes threatened by uh, fools. If you're surrounded by people who are distracting you, who are talking about useless things, and who are in, indulging in uh, harmful pursuits, killing and stealing and lying and cheating and so on, all of these things will drag you down, will make it more difficult for you to practice, and will even um, cause you to fall away from the practice. So this is the, the you know, it's quite a simple meaning, but uh, specifically in regards to the, uh, the meditation practice, it says, the, the, the point is that people will distract us, and people will sully, or will be a cause for us to sully our minds. The... Um, the question that always comes up is whether or not whether or not this means that we should ignore people who are uh, in trouble morally or, or have poor concentration, people who are on the wrong path. Shouldn't we help such people? And of course, this is the exception. The, the, the Buddha said, "Anyatra anudaya, anudaya anyatra anukampa," which means, uh, and you shouldn't hang out. Uh, etang, what is it? <coughs> Etang purisa, eta, eso puriso, so puriso, nasevitabo. Such a person should not be, uh, should not be uh, associated with, except in the case of pity or compassion. So the commentary explains, which is exactly how it should be explained, um, that if you have compassion, if out of compassion for someone, it's possible, or not even, you know, we should have the compassion. So if you think that a person uh, is capable, and you think you're able to to help them, then you should you should hang out with them, and you should try to support their practice, and you should help them to, to, to cultivate. If you're not able to, if it if you try and you fail, and it seems like this person is not going to um, not going to develop themselves, then then of course then then you should stay away from them actually, and you should go your own way because they will drag you down. So in meditation, this is um, especially important, and this is why, because meditation is the um, direct cultivation of, of, of wholesome mental states. So if you're constantly, if you're, if you're distracted or led astray by other people, then your, your mind, it, it becomes impossible to cultivate wholesome states of mind. This is um, th this is why the Buddha uh, often talks about staying alone, even away from good friends, because even wholesome talk, if uh, if 
uh, the if if engaged in over much can lead to to distraction as well because meditation is the cultivation of the mind it uh, our our environment um, and our our engaging engagement with the environment and with the world around us is uh, a, a uh, is an, is of utmost importance. So we have to be careful how we engage with the world around us. So um, for a meditator, even even good people, we should only engage in in moderation, and much less, much more so. Uh, we should be careful when when we uh, when we associate or um, relate to or interact with foolish people. They will distract us. They lead, they take away our uh, focus of mind. They take away our clarity of mind. And they stop us from seeing things as they are. We're not able to stay in the present because such people are constantly in the past or in the future. We're not able to stay in reality because such people are always talking about concepts. And <clears throat> we're not able to stay with what is important because such people are always engaged and, and concerned with and, and um, intent upon what is unimportant, what is unessential. So, um, unless we can help such people, and, and unless we can help such people easily without interrupting our own practice, we should be very careful to stay on our own. So for many people, this is, I think, an important reminder. If you can't find someone who can lead you, who can help you, who can support your practice, stay on your own. You're better off on your own because just having friends isn't... Uh, just the fact that you have friends alone isn't necessarily a useful or a good thing, something that leads to your happiness. You need good friends. You need friends who lead you to good things, friends who help you, who support you, who um, encourage you in your own spiritual development. So a simple teaching, but one that we should all keep in mind, and a very important aspect of our life is who we associate with. So that's the teaching for tonight. Thank you all for tuning in, and wish you all peace, happiness and freedom from suffering.